In this video, I'll explain 10 just thought laws of perception and how you can apply them to your layouts and compositions to take your design to the next level. Let's go. Hello again, my friends. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Adrian Somoza and I'm a former lead designer at MediaMonks and I'm teaching advanced level skills in web design and freelancing skills as well. So if you're interested, subscribe and turn on the notifications. Let's start. Law number one is pregnancy. So when confronted with complex shapes, we tend to reorganize them into smaller components or into a simpler whole. You're more likely to see the, this image composed of you know, the simple circle, square, and triangle like you see on the right, then as the complex and ambiguous shape the whole forms. In this case, seeing three distinct objects is simpler than seeing one complex object. In other cases, it's simpler to see a single object. Let me show you some examples. So in this case, right, it's much simpler to understand these little lines here as a circle and we can also see very clearly the the cir circle here even when it's cut right and this kind of draws our attention the law of pregnancy can be used to draw attention to an important element in the composition so for example here as there are many things right like characters and logo and stuff like that the the simple shapes are the ones that we are drawn towards more than like the more complex shapes like the text so the eye will scan the simpler shapes first and then see the whole right and so we can use that to draw our attention to CTAs for example like I've done in this case right and to also draw attention to some areas in the composition like the title and the paragraph like I did with this rectangles on the background. Okay, law of closure. When looking at a complex arrangement of individual elements, we tend to look for a single recognizable shape. Your first impression when looking at this image is to likely see a square even though the image is four straight lines. We fill in the missing information, right, the corners there, to make for a single recognizable shape. And so let me show you some examples of that. Here there's like a little frame made by the na navigation, right? We have an index here. We have some elements to zoom in and out, right? And we have also credits and, you know, social media links and the logo here. And we also have a floor plan here. So the navigation is doing a frame here. And we tend to fill in the gaps in between these shapes and create a kind of like a rectangle there. So I think this is one of the most common places where I use the closure law. Here, for example, we can apply this to create these cards by, you know, separating elements with space in between, right? But still, the eye kind of connects the dots here and creates like groups the elements. Same thing goes here. There's, you know, there's cards or widgets here that could even uh, be product cards. And you can connect the rectangle by, you know, connecting the elements that are on the edges. And so the eye kind of closes that gap. Law number three, figure ground. So elements are perceived as either figure, elements of focus, or ground background on which the figure sits. A classic exa example of this uh, is the image that we see here. Are you seeing a black face on a white background or two white faces in profile sitting on a black background, right? So the eye kind of goes back and forth and that's because there's no like clear intention as to where the eye should focus. Now, one of the first things people do when looking at your composition is determine what in your composition is figure and what is ground. This determination will occur quickly and subconsciously. 
So figure ground lets us know what we should be focusing on and what we can safely ignore in the composition. So we can use this to our advantage in our designs. So let's say that, you know, we're doing this website, for example. The white here, because it's very contrasting, it's going to be very clear what the background is and what the foreground is. So figure ground here is very, very clear. Now we can also kind of break that if we increase the size of an element so that it's going outside of the canvas like this word on the background. It's clear that that's the background. We don't need to pay attention to that, but it's there. So if we want to see it, it's there. It's a nice detail and we can pay attention to the text that's here. So the other thing we can do is to reduce the opacity. So I've done that, for example, in this website where you can see there's some textures in the background. Right? And they are very dim. I think I used 10% opacity or 5% opacity in some to make them part of the background so that the eye can concentrate on the text, but at the same time, there's some nice texture on the background to add some depth. Law number six, area. The smaller of two overlapping objects is seen as figure. The larger is seen as ground, and in the figure here, you will likely see the smaller square as figure in both cases. So let's take a look at this website as an example. This is my website and take a look at how in the CTAs I've used a much bigger padding than the size of the text. So that means that the text is much smaller than the area around it and so here's how like you can apply the area law properly so if we had less padding and the padding between you know the, the text and the button would be less than the size of the text right it, it would be difficult to read so this way we can apply the law of area to you know make sure that it's that our CTAs for example are very, very readable Law number five, similarity. Things that are similar are perceived to be more related than things that are dissimilar. Colors have been used in this image to denote similarity. Each column is determined by the similarity of color of the squares that make up the column. So through repetition of color, size, orientation, texture, font, shape, etc., we can design elements so they appear more related to each other. This is super helpful in design and it's basically creating design systems that are simple enough and repeated enough so that the user can understand them and relate elements by its function. So for example, think of CTAs, right? If you use the same type of CTAs throughout the website, right? Like this ones, you will be able to relate elements throughout the, the experience so that the user understands that those are CTAs. If each CTA has a different size, has a different shape, has a different color, has a different typeface, it's very difficult for the user to understand that these are related to each other. So it's very important to repeat, for example, CTAs so that you know it's easier for the user to understand the relationship. The other thing are typographic systems, right? I use very very few sizes and styles for a, for a hierarchy. So you can see here this style for the title and it, it's being used here, it's being used here, it's being used here, and it's being used here, here. So every instance where I have something almost like that size, I just use the same exact style. You can take a look at, you know, some other uh, tutorial here that I talked uh, more in depth about how to create a, the perfect typographic system. But you know, if you know me, you know that I love simplicity. I think simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. So that's one way to apply simplicity to your designs to make them more repeated and more consistent and to reinforce the similarity law. Law number six, uniform connectedness. Elements that have a visual connectedness are perceived as being more related than elements with no visual connection. So when you look at this image, you see two squares and two circles. 
But now, when you look at this image, you see two objects, each consisting of a square and a circle. Circle and square are connected by the line between them. Uniform connectedness beats similarity here. So even though circles are similar to each other, by having this line connect connecting you know, the square to the circle, th that beats the similarity principle. You can connect seemingly unconnected words in a composition through lines. Let me show you. For example, here, the two and chase guns might be seemingly unconnected, but because there's a line on top that connects the two elements together. Here's another example where, you know, you see 2010 to present, right? And these two words are very separated from each other, but because there's a line in between them, we can connect the two things. Law number seven, proximity. Things that are close to one another are perceived to be more related than things that are spaced farther apart. So in this image, you should see three groups of black and red circles. The pro proximity, the relative near nearness of the circles is stronger than the similarity of the colors. So even though we have different colors in these groups, by the white space around them, we can group elements together. One example is with the line height here. If we have a title that has a line height, right, and it's separated from an element like this video, the padding on the top of the text should be bigger than the padding between the lines. Okay, so here we have uh, around seven pixels in between the lines and around 20 pixels or 30 pixels between the text and the video. So that, um, that difference might be very subtle, but it's very important. And it's one of the things that can separate a intermediate or junior level design from a pro level. That attention to the detail in the proximity law is crucial and I use it all the time. Like here's another example. The, you're gonna notice that the padding that there is between the word bridge and the the image here is 10 but the padding between the images is 6 so why the word has more padding between the images than the images themselves because I want to group the images together and I want to separate that from bridge and the gap Okay, so because we have the same padding here between bridge and between the gap, and because this is kind of like a, a continuum, we can connect bridge and the gap, right? And then because we have less padding between the images than outside the images, we can connect the images together. Very crucial law to understand. And as you can see, this law applies everywhere and now you won't be able to unsee it. Law number eight, common region. Objects located in the same area and separated from other objects are perceived as related to each other. Adding a border around an element or group of elements is an easy way to create a shared area. You can also create a shared area by defining background behind these elements. And this principle helps structure and recognize information. Examples of the common region principle are often found in the interface elements, such as navigation bars, menus, forms, and so on. So let me show you an example here. Here, the footer elements are connected to each other by having the same background color. But notice that when this menu opens, these elements here that are on top of the white background, right? The ba white background of the menu start to feel more related to each other, right? So this is a, a clear example of how the law of common region can be applied. Law number nine, continuity. Elements arranged on a line or curve 
are perceived to be more related than elements not on the line or curve. So in this image, you should see a curved line with a vertical line running through it. Continuation here is stronger than similarity. This means that if we align elements to an edge, even though two elements might be distant from each other, they will feel connected. This is very important to understand because in composition I see junior designers or intermediate designers do this a lot. They just stack things on top of each other, either vertically or they stack them horizontally because they feel, you know, they feel they cannot disconnect things in a composition. But, but it's very important to understand that elements in a composition can feel connected because they share a same edge, even though if they, if they are not connected. So let me show you here in this example, you know, we have this two, these two numbers, the slide numbers. They are disconnected in terms of the, the white space, right, and the positioning. But because they have a same or shared edge, they feel still connected to each other. Also, the about and contact here, we also have like a, a title of the slide here and the navigation, right? The, the sorry, the, the home button. So these elements, right, are the navigation of the website, right, the main navigation, and they might feel disconnected from each other, but at the same time, because they share the same edge, they are connected from between each other. And last but not least, the law of symmetry. People tend to perceive objects as symmetrical shapes that form around their center. Symmetry gives us a feeling of solidity and order, and we tend to seek that. So it's our nature to impose order on chaos. So basically what I'm saying here is that symmetric compositions can work very well, it's hard to create a symmetric composition that is dynamic and so I want to show you some examples. So first off, right, I want to show you this example which is very symmetric but I think there's something to it that kind of works. It, I think it's the, the hierarchy and that there's a lot of repetition of elements that are just making this uh, mirror effect more powerful. Now, here's another example. This is a very symmetric composition, but it also has some asymmetry. Like we have a different batch here and here. We have the paragraph aligned to the left. And, you know, we have different things he here and there, right? It's not exactly symmetrical. And so this is a, a you know, a subtle way to break the symmetry. And this is um, another way to do symmetry which would which would be horizontal symmetry so you can like even though this is this doesn't look symmetrical it is because if you cut if you cut it uh, in half horizontally it's mirrored on the top and the bottom again it's not exactly mirrored and I think that gives it more interest but this is another type of symmetry you know that you can do vertical symmetry but also horizontal one and then last but not least, I think this website is amazing and it has a very symmetric vertical hero that is broken by this uh, paragraph alignment, right? And so that makes it much more interesting than if, it, if the paragraph was centered, okay? And you can see throughout the whole website that it values back and forth between symmetry and asymmetry. Symmetry asymmetry symmetry asymmetry so that's also something interesting to take into account amazing my friends so let me know if you have any follow-up questions in the comments below i'll make sure to answer all of them and if you have any you know topic ideas that i that you would like for me to do next and potentially i can create you know more videos around this topic so speaking of design I have a free course with five secrets to compose beautiful websites with the golden canon grid. Check it out. The link is in the description. And hey, if your end goal with learning these skills is to have a financially peaceful career as a freelance web designer, remember that learning hard skills like the ones in this video is really second priority. Unfortunately, it's not going to pay the bills. 
it's much more important for you to learn business skills like how to price your work and get more clients so i want to encourage you to check out this playlist next to learn more about the business side of design so you can build a financially peaceful career for yourself and once you have profit then you can dive deeper into the design skills now if you're finding my content valuable i want to invite you to join my mentorship program where you will learn you know advanced web design skills like the ones we covered here and also learn how to monetize them so that you can have more freedom to do the things you love and have a financially peaceful career like i said same goal that uh, this business playlist has or the business playlist that, that i mentioned has but in a community setup you know where you can be surrounded with like-minded web designers we have weekly calls and you have unlimited access so once you join you will be a, a lifetime member of the bond club so if you're interested make sure to check the link below and you know i will schedule a call with you once you apply to see if we are a good fit to work together if you learned something give this video a like it helps a lot and remember to subscribe and enable notifications you got this my friend let's bridge the gap one pixel at a time take a look at this video next to keep learning